Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flake Show. My name is Chris Wong. Several updates for the DCEU, starting off with an exclusive from Omega Underground. This is from Christopher Mark. Birds of Prey audition tape teasing Renee Montoya, Black Mask, and Violent Vigilantes is his article. I'm going to link it in the description below, but here it is. He says this, it looks like casting is well underway for Birds of Prey. Omega Underground has an audition tape for the role of a police officer named Lopez, a cover for Renee Montoya, speaking to other cop named Evans. In the tape, the two detectives are breaking down a murder crime scene, mentioning a fee new female assassin that uses a crossbow as someone has been killed and the body as an arrow in their throat. Huntress, anyone? <laughs> the actress in question is Janine Serralis. Uh, I don't know if I said that right. Her credits include the Coen brothers inside Lewin Davis, uh, James Gray's Two Lovers, and will play another cop in Joel Wright's thriller, The Woman in the Window, starring Amy Adams and Gary Oldman, which is currently filming in New York City. Anyways, it wasn't the Huntress reference that caught uh, Omega Underground's attention. A few weeks back, it was reported by The Wrap that Roman Sionis... Uh, uh, aka Black Mask would be the big bad. Lopez mentions a crime figure called Cecil Rockus, which we believe would be a casting alias for Roman. Also, it's revealed that nine organized crime families, which include the Zetas, Zetas, uh, or Los Zetas Cartel, the East Harlem Rollers, the Golden Dragons, the Ninth Avenue Gang, and the Casamento family, have been wiped out or executed. Another reason why we think this part might be Montoya's is that she refers to the fellow officer as baby, inferring a romantic relationship, and it's been revealed that Renee is expected to be an LGBTQ character. It's possible the off-camera character is potentially supposed to be another female officer. So it also sounds like the ladies might be a violent vigilantes, not unlike Frank Castle's Punisher, as established with the possible body count they've been racking up. Producer and star Margot Robbie did tease a possible R-rated not too long ago. Filming is expected to begin on January 15th in Los Angeles. Uh, a release date for Birds of Prey has yet to be made official. So you can go ahead and go to this website so you can actually click on the two uh, uh, audition tapes for this person uh, and see what you think. I mean, i not sure. I mean, I'm going to take their word for it that this could possibly be audition tapes for her. That does not mean that she's actually going to be playing Renee Montoya, but it looks like they're auditioning a ton of characters and different women. Uh, and so it remains to be seen who's actually going to be those roles. But at least you can get an idea of uh, maybe the parts about how there's murders and things like that. It's very, very Gotham and I think uh, uh, very, very much uh, interested and how Birds of Prey is going to come out if it's truly R-rated uh, and there's going to be a lot of killing, a lot of murder, uh, something the darker side of this DCEU and I'm okay with it because that is exactly how it's supposed to be anyway, right? So that is great. The next news comes from our own very own friends at DC Films Hub. I'm going to read their article instead of they'll make it underground because they already got their shot. But um, this is from DC Films Hub. Handmaid's Tale, Reed Morano, being eyed by Warner Brothers to direct Supergirl movie. This is by Craig Lynn. With the recent announcement that Warner Brothers is developing a Supergirl movie with 22 Jump Street Oren Uziel, a new report indicates the studio has an eye on Reed Morano to direct the Girl of Steel film. Per GWW, uh, formerly Underground, Omega Underground, Morano is currently at the top of the studio's wish list to helm Supergirl. As of yet, there has been no official offer made. Morano is best known for her cinematography work on Kill Your Darlings and the Skeleton Twins. She made her directorial debut in 2015 with Meadowland and has directed three episodes of Hulu's Handmaid's Tale in which she won an Emmy for. So that's, that's some really good credits for that. This year, we will see her second feature film I think we are alone now starring Peter Dinklage and L.F. Fanning released in September Morano is currently working with Blake Lively on the rhythm section and upcoming spy film from 007 producer Barbara Barbara Broccoli so 
uh, it's not in this article, but <laughs> in the other article from Underground, they suggest that it's possible that is it possible that uh, fan casting were to start adding Ellie Fanning as Supergirl? You know, I'm not going to say any more about that. The Emmy winning director is highly sought after. Earlier this year, she had a meeting with Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy. However, Morano shot down rumors that she was directing a Star Wars film once the news of her meeting with Kennedy broke. Supergirl is still in early stages of development, but it's uh, exciting to hear Warner Brothers is already looking at filmmakers, as we already know that uh, Orion Uziel is doing the uh, screenwriting, so I think it seems rather fitting that they're already searching for directors, um, and uh, I am actually very excited for this because I, I want more you know of the Superman universe not so much the Batman side of things we've always got Batman side of things we need more Superman side of things in in the cinematic universe and uh, I, I'm really excited to see who's gonna be playing Supergirl uh, is Supergirl going to be very much related in terms to Man of Steel in that part of the universe or are they kind of in, in a way trying to suggest a, a certain reset button in this sense? I hope not and I'll think so but uh, I'm really interested to see what direction they're going to go with Supergirl and how bad she's going to be. I mean it's got to be way better uh, not, not that there's anything wrong with Supergirl and CW. It's not my cup of tea but uh, I'm really looking forward to the seeing Supergirl uh, in the movie universe, something that we've never seen since the 1980s, and I want to get that going again. I want to see how it connects to Zack Snyder's universe, if at all, and I'm really looking forward to that. So, um, I'm glad it's part of, it's not Superman 2, okay? It's not Man of Steel sequel, but uh, it, I guess it could be kind of the next best thing in, in terms of being within Superman's family, right? And uh, that's all I can ask for, because th there's a lot of movies coming out, and I, I, I love to hear more about the DC, how they're continuing forward. Uh, i not really looking like they're looking back, but um, moving forward now with the DCEU in terms of the movies producing uh, out, you know, we've got a lot of ton of movies coming out, and one of them, as we all know, is Aquaman, which is coming out this year. Apparently, there has been a test screening of Aquaman, um, and uh, very... Uh, it's been multiple test screens actually so far, but the recent Aquaman test screen reactions say the film's good, but not great. This is coming from We Got This Covered uh, by David Pountain. Is that his name? Um, after a string of divisive, critically derided films that failed to demonstrate the staying power of the DCU, his opinion, there is a lot of writing on the success of Aquaman to keep audiences invested in what many assumed would be a world-conquering franchise by now. In his opinion. That being said, if early reactions to the movie's test screens are anything to go by, Arthur Curry's solo debut could be a welcome addition to the struggling cinematic universe that may not reinvent the genre, but may tide the studio over until they come up with something bigger. Uh, this is his own opinion, but he doesn't even own anything. But Steve Weintraub of Collider of test screening being held for James Wan's feature in the San Fernando Valley and suggested the consensus so far is promising. So Steve Weintraub, uh, Collider Frosty, tweeted out this, Guess which upcoming superhero movie test screen last night in the Sir F San Fernando Valley? Heard good things. Uh, Christopher Mark of Under Oh My God Underground, uh, which had an early report, uh, reports were that Aquaman is good but not great. I hear it's good, not great, and that's all we can hope for in the end. I'll take it. Also, Casey Walsh of Go Geeks Worldwide is, says that hashtag Aquaman is a phase one MCU film through and through, so if you like those you love it if you don't you, you uh, if you didn't you probably won't get much enjoyment out of Aquaman so um, in, in in a lot of cases uh, what they're probably suggesting is that it's more of a simple story as MCU has been a long time coming to get to the point where they had where people are on like it's the it's a TV show but in the movie form and so they're really like why well, can't wait to see the next one I can't wait to see the next one this is really the origin film of Aquaman so I'm expecting it to be an origin film and and in, indeed, uh, Wands, James Wan's recent statement, statements suggest that he had every intention of keeping things clean and simple, telling Entertainment Weekly, 
I wanted to keep the story to the world of Aquaman and not have to worry about what other characters are doing in their films and how that would affect us. I just thought the simplest way was to keep it clean, keep it simple, and let it be an Aquaman story. And I could really get into that. I could really get into that. That's an origin story through and through, and that's how it really should be. Um, and it looks like that's what they're going to do. They're going to make it all about Aquaman. We're not going to throw in all these other DC characters. We're going to be kind of related to the story, but it's centered about Aquaman, just like how Wonder Woman was centered on Wonder Woman. Man of Steel was centered on Superman. So um, these are origin films. That's why the, I'm thinking that's what he's rem uh, referring to as a phase one MCU film. We haven't gotten past that point yet, but they're trying to do this now. Aquaman is in. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be good. Of course, this is all subjective because you can go into theater and you could love it like you've never loved anything before. And that is awesome. That's your opinion. And I suggest you go in walking with a blank slate in your mind and just go in and enjoy the heck out of that film um, I, uh, and make your own judgments and thoughts about it without referring to somebody else's judgments and thoughts about it. Your own opinion is your best very best review and then I, I and even if you don't like it you don't like it if you love it you love it you know at least you made your own judgment and opinion on that now there was a lot of different judgment and opinions about Justice League and a lot of us are still wanting that Snyder cut and so we did that mail campaign and I think uh, you know uh, California has already sent out a whole bunch of mailers right now um, hopefully by Monday um, uh, you know, Walter Hamano will walk into his office and it's loaded with mails everywhere or, you know, whenever the mailman comes to send mail to him, he's going to have a lot of truckloads of stuff. Maybe. I don't know. But we'll see if that actually happens and we actually get a statement out of the Warner Brothers camp. But in the meantime, it looks like fans are actually going out of their way to edit more of this cause. We know there's Chris Dawson's going to do the black suit edition and I can't wait for that because that's going to be probably the most uh, different out of all the cuts that we have seen so far but there is another one and this is actually from let me see where is this whiplash dynamo uh he put this i'm going to put the link in in the description below he has done little clips and things like that so far but he is actually making one that's called hashtag unauthorized Snyder Cut and so there he's got a launch trailer because I think he's done he's ready to release it it's going to come out on September 2nd or September 3rd of, of this year 2018 so very very soon and I can't wait to see that you look at the trailer you see that he's added a lot of those deleted scenes he's added scenes from other movies and trying to make it look like the actual movie so I'm really interested to see how that comes out and I'm thinking it's an extended scenes it's probably going to be very long uh, will he take out the Russian family who knows but he's going to have a lot of editing involved in that and I'm very interested to see that I'm interested to see a lot of different cuts and out there um, and so I'm interested really really looking forward to that also AB director looks like he's gonna make his own cut of the film instead of these little clips here and there uh, I can't wait for that because he's been really done very good job with the things that he's done for Justice League um, even though some of the things I was like well I wouldn't put that in or I would have took that out and things like that but it's their own very own cut I can't complain I'm like it's not like I'm making a fan cut out there so I'm taking it all in uh, and I'm judging it about my own merits but it's really good that's it's really awesome it's not the Snyder cut that we all want okay you know, granted yes it's not the Snyder cut we all want but in the meantime if you want a more enjoyable version of it Take a look at all these fans cuts. Take a look at these ultimate editions. You may find a little bit more enjoyment of that instead of watching the actual film that's on uh, available for rent or buy at right now. So, um, you know, let's be on the lookout for this September 3rd. I can't wait to see this. Uh, once I see that, I'll give a little review about this. Um, the unauthorized, once again, hashtag unauthorized Snyder Cut. I'm going to put the this uh, link to this launch trailer in the description of my video. And hopefully by then, he will let us know how we can all get our respective copies of this unauthorized Snyder Cut. All right, that is it for tonight. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.